Caddis Maximus here. This time we're looking at unique and large extractors. I did a couple extractor videos recently about common ones like from Napa as well as the Hansen and Craftsman external spiral and stubby uh, internal or pipe extractors as well as a while ago about the Harbor Freight external uh, sawtooth type extractors. These were the kind of the remaining ones. I decided to make a video just about them. And then I would be able to finish up the little re extractor review series. And there was somebody who commented about large extractors and how they're difficult to find, particularly external extractors and larger drive sizes, such as three quarter inch and one inch. Uh, those can be difficult to find. A lot of times you have to call the sales departments of various tool manufacturers and just ask them if there's a special order, if you really need a spiral extractor for an inch and a half or two inch or something like that. What we have here is large internal pipe extractors. These would be the most common ones. They're known as pipe extractors because if you, you can totally use these uh, as bolt extractors where you drill out the center of the, uh, the bolt. The issue is, is that they're so massive, the only way you're really turning them is with a large pipe wrench. One of the, the amount of force that would be required to turn these. Uh, that or if you happen to have an eight, four point or eight point socket and three quarter inch drive. Let's take a look at these. They make them in straight extractors. This actually would use a one and sixteenth inch drill just to drill out the center. And it's a traditional with any other four point tapered extractor. It's the more modern design with the sawtooth. It's a proto and you just hammer this in and then try to twist it out. Nicer extractors like this tend to have uh, steeper tapers that aren't as sharp so they get a little bit heavier engagement. But you do need to make sure you drill the hole deep enough so they can properly go in. And then over here we have some twist style. As they get larger, they do start adding flutes. There is a variation in the number of flutes and twists. We have a number 8, uh, number 10, and number 12 from Cleveland Twist Door Company, which used to be an institution, uh, especially for anything large. And that's what these are sold as. And you would just uh, need to use a very large adjustable wrench or four-point socket or pipe wrench to really turn these. These are huge. Uh, this one is would need a one and a quarter inch drill. And of course, I like large tools like anything. And so here's a huge extractor. This thing would use a one and three quarter inch drill just to draw out the center. This would obviously remove a fastener that had a head size of about two and a half inches or so, or maybe 75 millimeters. And, uh, uh, it would take a tremendous amount of force to try to turn this if you're trying to extract something uh, that large. But nonetheless, I did want to point out that these are some of the largest extractors I've seen. You dig them up as pipe extractors. And no, I haven't seen any uh, in all my tool collecting that were really large external type extractors. It seems that you really don't strip out a nut once they reach uh, dozens of millimeters or you know inches and die two, three inches. That's pretty rare to actually strip out a nut that has flats that are that large. Usually it's the fasteners broken off and that you're stuck using an internal extractor anyway. I've heard that from somebody who uh, builds rock crushers. Enough about large extractors. We have some one or use once only extractors. These are known as lug nut extractors. And what they are is they're simply sockets that have counter threads or left hand threads. So as you turn them counterclockwise, they actually get tighter. And if you have a stripped out lug nut or one that you don't have a security key for, you just pound this on some and then you would just start ratcheting it and it would drag the lug nut all the way up until it hit the bottom of the socket and it would jam because of all these different threads or the huge series of threads and then the lug nut would unscrew as the socket jammed on it. These are often known as... Um, one use only extractors because once you've threaded this on and uh, extracted the nut, it's jammed in there and you can't really pound it out. You could press it out. I mean, technically you could pound it out, but it would probably destroy most of the threads. You'd have to find some way of welding something to the nut to actually unscrew this because if you just hammer or press out the nut, once it's in one of these sockets, it could very well just destroy most of the threads. Uh, but it could also work. I just wanted to point out that those are some of the ultimate ones is where they are threaded. That way they just have a huge amount of traction. We also have some cheaper Craftsman ones here that even actually print Craftsman on these. Um, and these are spline drive where the flats are worn off on the head of the bolt. And so the idea on these would be that they're slightly undercut and it would just slip onto the edge of the bolt to kind of get it centered. 
which I thought was a good design idea. And then there's the teeth are slightly longer and that actually cuts slots into the side of the nut or bolt. And then you can extract them. And these uh, end up getting pretty beat up pretty fast, but they actually work uh, surprisingly well in many situations. I did want to show down here that there is some unique designs such as these aces. If we compare to these protos up here, um, these aces were really nice because they had this concave four point profile. So if we look at them here, you can see now the aces will wear out quicker. They're not quite as robust or as thick uh, for a proportional drill size as the sawtooth version. That's kind of why the sawtooths are more popular now. But a big advantage of these aces is in any kind of a softer material, these large ridges that they have because of the concave cut really dig in deeply and give you a lot of traction. And so I did want to point out those style. Of course, they're not as common because it's more expensive to manufacture a concave shape. The last few things we'll talk about is these are designed to be used in impact drivers. These are high-speed steel. I think these are tectons. Um, they don't really work so well at cutting. The idea is they kind of cut and then will th eventually thread in and then extract whatever fastener you're using. But they have a weird design where they're a flat tip, so it's really... I think for trying to do it for Phillips head screws, but it just has never worked out well for me. How these have worked out better is when I pre-drilled, and they do have kind of a steep taper, but it's nice because you can use them just in your impact driver, and once you start them, the impact driver will just hammer these out, and either the whole thing will split open, or it will unscrew. And so this is where I recommend these, and they're pretty common as soon as you search for impact extractors. Then we have some very common style screw Phillips head screw extractors. These are very common, but most of them don't work because they're not made well enough. Now these are some Craftsman's, and they're pretty nice because they have a very sharp drill point. So they're actually a drill bit with just a tip, and it drills out until eventually you hit a point to where it grabs hard enough to extract a little Phillips head screw. And these tend to work better, especially when they're sharp like this because you can tap on the back a little bit. And that you will usually grab the Phillips head enough to allow you to extract it. The last couple extractors we'll talk about here is first is these kind of unique ones. These were in a lot of different stores, particularly Sears. They're real delicate, but they're real short. And they would work great in very compact situations. These actually have a nice design as well, where they have a, a nice steep rake angle, very aggressive left hand drill bit. And a lot of times, just drilling it out with the left hand or a counterclockwise drill bit, it will catch and the fastener will extract. If it doesn't, um, what you do is you drill out the hole deep enough, and you pull it back out, and then this thing here is the a spiral extractor that's been drilled out and is threaded onto the drill bit. You can see the threads. You would thread that down, put this back in the hole, and the tip will kind of provide some stability, and then you use a wrench across these flats to actually twist the extractor in. It's supported by the threads and a little chamfer, thus extracting the fastener. They're kind of fascinating. These threads end up getting particles in them and have a lot of issues even though they put a slot in there. The slot's not just for removing particles but to allow it to flex on that taper. Uh, the first couple times you drive this, it, you'll never be able to unscrew it obviously because these little sharp threads will be uh, demolished. And kind of the final issue with these is once this extractor is all the way down, you either need a deep, uh, deep well four point. It would have to be a four point since they rounded the corners of that nut so much you couldn't actually use an eight point. It would just barely be catching on. So you really have to use a, a, a spanner or a open end wrench to actually twist the extractor itself. And that can be cumbersome um, in many situations. And so that kind of surprised me. I suppose once you get the extractor in there, you can get it jammed some and then attempt to unscrew it by the handle itself. And I believe that's why they have the threads on it, the direction that they do is so as you unscrew via using the hex top, that it will also drive the extractor in tighter. Uh, I would assume in that situation, the extractor would become very stuck in the end of the bolt. And these only ever came in four piece sets. The last couple of ones I call spline type extractors. These are real compact extractors. These black ones came from uh, CarQuest and they're really nice, uh, really well made, almost perfectly made what you would expect. The Craftsman's are 
not quite as well made. They look like five star or Torx, but they're actually eight point. And I thought, you know, if I ever ran into an eight point fastener, these are probably sockets for them, but they're just advertising them as uh, extractors. And the idea is you drill a hole and then you pound this down and this act as a, acts as a brooch and cuts little slots into the hole and then you try to extract it. Uh, these would be kind of hit or miss. The Craftsman's are pretty nice, but as compared to these Car Quest, the Car Quest are actually uh, uh, much nicer. Uh, they all have heavy duty shanks. I like that the hex has a shoulder so the socket doesn't fall all the way down on it. Um, the body is always larger than the shank and the big deal about these, and if we can get a close look you can see, is that this has much more splines. They're very sharp and they're actually roll formed and you can see how the metal's been upset at the bottom of the slot and has been smushed at the top. So that's a forging process and it means these teeth are going to be as hard as you can possibly get because they physically just squish them versus cutting out a solid piece of steel it causes the metal crystals to actually flow and align more in the directions of the T. So these are actually pretty darn strong. The Achilles heel of these type of extractors is because um, once they get into the fastener it has to be pulled off and it can be very difficult. Usually you're putting this in a vise and using a chisel to hammer off the bolt. And that's one thing I would want to mention. But they're totally invaluable many times because they're just really really compact. And that's the end of my extractor series. We've talked about quite a few different extractors and we'll be moving on to some new kinds of tools in the next videos. I really appreciate everybody watching. Please subscribe. Catus Maximus out.